The following is a presentation of the Black Hollywood Live Network, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. Hollywood redefined. From Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menunos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is Black Hollywood Live. Phenomenal women. Featuring in depth interviews with today's most inspiring women. Black Hollywood Live. Hollywood redefined. You're listening to Black Hollywood Live. And now, the host of Black Hollywood Live, Phenomenal Women. My girl Whitney, I love her and I love this song because it fits so perfectly for the show. <laughs> Welcome back to Phenomenal Woman, everyone. I'm your host, Ashida Andre, and with me today I have an amazing guest, Julie Ann O'Connor. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm thrilled to be here. I am so happy for you to be here. Now, Julie Ann O'Connor is an author of an amazing book called Spelling It Out for Your Man. She's also a relationship coach, and you are also not just an author, a relationship coach, but you also have a podcast, you are a radio personality. I do, I ha now have a show called Transforming Relationships. <laughs> I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. Absolutely. We are going to get into this book because I am so excited to talk about it. Spelling it out for your man, what inspired you to write this book? Oh boy, well, you know, originally I thought I might write a book called The Secret to Happy Marriage. <laughs> <laughs> And something happened along the way, and it turned out that not everyone was happy. Um, you know, I was really fascinated by couples and what made things work and what made things not work. And so I thought, after years of asking people a secret to a happy relationship and hearing the same thing over and over and over again, <laughs> I thought somebody should write a book about this, and it should be made crystal clear and um, and thus the book but you can see of course where the title went was spelling it out for your man that yes it, it's a lot simpler than we make it right <laughs> so how did you do the research on love because it's so it's so widespread sure. you know you have the male's perspective you have the women's perspective how did you do your research well you know really um, very very originally and it's been about 20 years now I, I literally was just asking people what's the secret to a happy marriage there was you know early in my my life I had a little slap in the face of with something that made it very clear that life was precious and could be short for me. And so I was like, okay, well, if life is going to be short, if something could happen, then what really matters at the end of the day? And it all comes down to your relationships. Mm -hmm. And so I started, you know, I set out on the journey to ask people to find out what worked so that I could have happy, meaningful relationships. And then when I started hearing it, there was a point like, you know, a couple of years into it, I was like, you know, I think I need to write a book. <laughs> And then it was going to be, oh, okay, The Secret to Happy Marriage, and then that was just not appropriate. So you wrote this book before you got married or while you were married? I actually finished it while married. Oh, okay. <laughs> so what are some of the secrets? Like, what did, what did you find out? Okay, well, I'm you know, curious. I mean, there, there are so many, first of all. Yes. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's, it's little tips. It's little things that we probably know, but we don't really take heed to. Um, like, for example, men are devoid of the hint gene. I mean, they don't get hints. You know? <laughs> and men will tell you this, that, you know, they get very frustrated by a woman who seemingly drops hints. And, and the way men interpret that is that they're being guilted into something. So, for example, you know, oh, geez, you know, I, I, I wish somebody would dump the garbage. It sure is overflowing. Right. You know, and the men will be like, do, do, do. <laughs> and you're like, no, really, it's falling on the floor. And they're like, do, do, do. And then pretty soon you're like, okay, fine, I'll just take it out myself. And they're like, all you had to do was ask. And, <laughs> and you're like, what was I doing? But men will tell you, if you just say, will you please take out the garbage, they would be honored and thrilled to serve you because a good man wants to please his woman. So let me ask you, should we just come out and ask? Absolutely. And but so many, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you no, off there because now I'm getting passionate. <laughs> I'm starting to get passionate here because I absolutely agree with you on that. You should just ask instead of just doing hints. That would annoy me. Mm -hmm. And so how do you tell the ladies, our viewers, really just ask. Sh actually tell them how important it is to just ask. Yeah. It keeps and, it simple. Okay, so thus the title, Spelling It Out for Your Man, mm -hmm. which is really all about spell it out for your man and then he'll understand and he'll serve you because men, mm. and you know, I address the male perspective in this too, so don't get me wrong, and I absolutely don't men bash, but I do hit hard with some of the stereotypes. And for women, you know, if the men understood that women are nurturers by nature, right. yeah, and, and this is not, 
everybody. Everyone has different levels of masculinity and femininity, and so we all operate a little differently. But, you know, generally speaking, women are nurturers, and we have a very difficult time asking because it seems like we're demanding to us in our in our world. Now, some people have mastered it. You may be somebody who can ask, you know, straight up. I'm very what good you at want. that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you probably learned that, or your mother knew that. <laughs> That is not the masses. And so you probably do, you know, you probably have men dropping at your feet because they're like, finally, somebody who just communicates right. you know, and stop beating around the bush. You know, they don't need the long drawn out stories like we we need to right. actually, you know, yeah. actually we need to vent things through long drawn out stories. That's part of the women's makeup. That's how we, you know, we deal with things. Now, in your book, you talk about uh, so why so many people continue to make repeated mistakes that push other push others away time and time again. What are some of the mistakes that we make as women? Oh gosh, wow. Um, okay, so there, you know, there, <laughs> there are a lot of things that we do uh, that push men away, and for so many reasons. And this, this could apply to any sort of a relationship. I mean, it could be a woman with a woman too. It could be, you know, anybody really in a relationship. Um, what people are attracted to, and there's no doubt you know this because I know we were talking before the show. Right. And we were like, what? Why do people get attracted to the jerk? You know, right. is, is the question that we all ask. But you know the reason is because human beings are attracted to those people who don't push. They're the people who step back. You know, you look at these gorgeous, amazing actresses and actors, and what is you know drawing people to them is that they're not they're so grounded in their self worth that people are attracted to them. They're not out there going, "Hey, look at me!" Yeah, <laughs> right, right. Hey, pay attention. So one of the things that people do is, you know, women, we sort of, you know, innately have this sexual side that's very attractive to men in the beginning. And we have mastered that in the beginning. But then what happens, we get into a relationship and we start down this path of wanting reassurance. And mm. we all do it. And so and that is a self-worth issue. Because when you realize that what men are really attracted to is that sexual side where you were grounded and you let them come to you, then you'll want to continue that throughout a marriage or forevermore. So really, so basically <laughs> it's remaining confident. It is. It's all about your self-worth and it's about understanding that you're a magnificent person. You're an unbelievable woman if you're a woman. Mm -hmm. And you know, people will come to you if it's the right person, they'll be there. They'll they'll want to be with you. And to push anything else is, you know, it. to push an agenda is absolutely crazy because it it has the opposite effect. So ladies, to stay attractive to your man is to remain confident, have a sense of self-worth. Absolutely. And keep your lipstick on and your hair done too. <laughs> Okay, that's to keep it going on. <laughs> I have something funny to say about that. You know, my mother used to tell me, okay, she's like, okay, I'm going to tell you the tips for a man, honey. You know, when right. I was little, she's like, you know, always always shave and always do your makeup. <laughs> right. I was like, mom, you know. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, that has stuck with me my whole life, you know, about hygiene and stuff. <laughs> but, but ultimately, yes, it comes down to your essence. Your essence. I absolutely agree with that because I know for me, I always make sure – you know, in a relationship but not in a relationship that I just maintain looking beautiful and and work at it because that's work. Yeah, that's a lot of work staying. Yeah. You know, and the other thing I just want to add this because you know you probably have a, a, a tremendous audience that are, are you know female based. Right, right. <laughs> and and so you know here's what I have to say about that is that. When you, I have literally interviewed couples for years, and what you'll find is that there's good-looking guys with women who you're like, huh, what's going on? And you know what? They're beautiful from the inside out. And yeah. so beauty, I mean, we do all of this, but this should match what's coming it's from the inside. And you know, it, it does not matter. There are gorgeous women out there who are still insecure, and men will, you know, they're they're like what we call with men in LA the shh, don't speaks. In right, other words, they're right. beautiful, but as soon as they open their mouth, you're right. like, ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't speak. So let me ask you, on your personal op opinion as a relationship coach, how does a woman who has insecurities work on become not having insecurities? How wow, can she better we're going herself? There. Yeah, we're gonna go there. <laughs> okay. We're gonna help some people today. And you know, okay, so there are so many things that create insecurity with women, and and you, everybody has insecurities. There's no question about it. Um, so there's a lot of things that you can do to ground yourself in who you are. But what the first thing is really identifying what your insecurities are. And the way to do that is take a look at literally every single thing that you say about somebody else. That you, mm -hmm. when you're down on somebody else, 
turn the finger back at you and you'll start to see some of your recurring issues. So if you're gossiping and you're saying something about somebody recurring, it doesn't matter if it's another woman or if you're if you're man bashing, right. uh, you'll start to see your own issues in that. Oh, wow. Okay, well, we can definitely work on that. <laughs> and I'm not saying anything bad today because right, I right. want to reveal anything about myself. <laughs> I am far from perfect. Right. This book is all about the, the the advice I need to take for myself as well. Right, right. <laughs> so also, too, I want to talk about one of the things that a lot of women share is that men run from marriage. Oh, they yeah. run from commitment. <laughs> and here in your book, part four, Marriage, Why Me? Mm -hmm. You have understanding men's disinterest. Explain oh, yeah. that to me. <laughs> Okay, so you know, I get out. I'm I'm speaking all over the place, and I have people come to me for you know their their signed copies of their books, uh -huh. and right away people open up and the stories come out, and and a tremendous amount of women come to me and they're like, I've been married five six years, and you know we're engaged or we're getting there, and you can just and then they open up about their bitterness about it and how frustrated they are. Here's the reality. Okay, so. This is what I found from asking people and getting candid replies for 20 years. <laughs> so men are, are very, they're very simple, they're very straightforward. What they hear, and, and here's, let me back up just a little. I, would, I started out my questioning saying, what's the secret to a happy marriage? Right. And I would ask people who had been married for you know 50 years, people who had just been married, and they all, all the men across the board, now the ladies will guess, okay, what's their answer? It's gonna be sex, right? Right. But that is not their answer. What their answer is, is happy wife, happy life. Okay, so right, right. they want to please their women. But then you start to talk to men or you hear them open up about marriage, life after marriage, and they're miserably unhappy a lot of the time. Yes. And so what men who are hesitating to get married, all they hear is, oh man, you know, after marriage, it's all over, you know, and they hear this. Not only do they hear it, but they witness it all day mm. long. So now if you're a man who's very simple and very straightforward and men, if things are good, they don't want to upset status quo. So if you're a great girl, they're, 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 you're going to have it the worst. Are you okay? Right. Because they're not going to want to take it to the next level because they're going to think that's going to change everything. So it, and, and it does, but I'll, that's another reason. Right, right. <laughs> Because I want to talk about that too. Yeah. Why does it, why does things change? But go ahead. Finish yeah. Talking. No, that I mean that's really the essence of it. Men hear all of these horrible things about marriage. They witness it throughout their whole entire lives. And why would they, if they're very straightforward, they're very realistic, generally speaking, mm -hmm. why would they want to upset status quo if they have a great girl? So if you're in a relationship, not married, just mm -hmm. dating, and everything is going great, mm -hmm. they want to not get married because they want to keep the great relationship. You got it. As boyfriend and girlfriend, <laughs> not husband and wife. It sounds absurd, but it's yeah. absolutely truth, and men will tell you that. Now, whereas a woman, okay, we're, we're made up very differently, mm -hmm. so we want progress. So what we do is we go through life and we're like, okay, we want to have the happy fairy tale wedding. And that's like kind of, we're born with this, okay, for the guys. Right, <laughs> Record. Right. I mean, we, we are. We want the, the fairy tale. And so we go through life and we're like, okay, we want to get married. We find the guy and then we're working towards that. Now, a guy is not going to marry you because he's got some innate urge to get married. What he's going to do is he's going to eventually be smart enough to say, I need to please my woman. She wants to get married, marry her. I, I assure you, my husband did not propose to me because he had some urge to go get married, <laughs> okay? But he knew that I did, and so he wanted to please me. So that was it, And but, but women will get frustrated. So you start going into a relationship for years and years, and you're gonna find that the woman gets more and more and more frustrated, and then pretty soon they split, and the guy is like, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> that is very interesting because now I feel like, oh, well, okay, if I have a boyfriend, he's going to propose to me. I'm going to look at it like, okay, you're proposing to me because you know that's going to make me happy, but it's not really what you want to do. Okay. Yeah. So this is, herein lies the fundamental problem, okay, mm -hmm. because we communicate differently and herein lies the book, Every Man Should Read My Book, so the woman doesn't have to ask because no woman wants to have to tell a guy, hey, you know what, I want you to propose. Right, exactly. Oh, now you propose because... You know, I asked you to. Now, here's the reality of it. If you know a man will propose because you tell them this is your your you know urge to get married or whatever, then what's so wrong with that? You know, at the end of the day, you should never question whether or not they propose because they want to marry you if you are okay with your self worth. What we mm. need is the reassurance. So we want them to do it without our asking. Right. But they right. don't get hints. <laughs> hmm. So. Well, I guess I can accept that. <laughs> I know, you know, and that's why the book, if a man reads it and the woman reads it, no one has to say anything. <laughs> right, right. And, and the thing is, well, you know, another question for you. 
why does it change when you get married? Okay. Because one of the things that I have a lot of friends who are married and they were happily dating, mm -hmm. everything was going smooth. The mm -hmm. guy is like, okay, we're going to get married. We're going to have children. And all of a sudden his whole aura changed. Uh -huh. And then I always would look at it and go, what changed? Mm -hmm. What happened to the fun? Why is it? And I understand a little bit about it. Yeah. The fun changes because now you move into a house and you got to work harder. Mm -hmm. The fun changed because now you have children and now you have to work harder because now you have an extra your bill. You got to uh -huh. pay for child care you got to pay for you know if you have a nanny yeah. so all those things happen um, over the course of your marriage as opposed to when you're dating mm -hmm. you're just partying all the time playing in the sandbox all day <laughs> you're like hey let's go play let's go have fun let's go to the movies let's go you yeah. know to go out to eat and then you stop doing that when you get married but in my opinion I always thought you can still make time for that yeah am I off base with thinking okay that? no okay um, you know I think that <laughs> you're just fo focusing on one aspect which is very realistic and those things do happen um, you know it, it doesn't if you're alive there are gonna be things you have to worry about and issues that you have to deal with you know the goal is to get to a place where you can lighten up on each other and not worry about all the the worries <laughs> right <laughs> because as long as you're alive you're gonna have them right uh, the alternative is not good so so the, realistically what happens is again after marriage especially with a man and a woman what tends to happen is we have very different ways of dealing with things so we get married and men again don't need to upset status quo okay mm -hmm. so they go along everything's fine they got married they please their woman that's a big thing to to men it's like okay it's a big thing I'm gonna gift her with this wedding and she's gonna be cool for like years right. no 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 <laughs> right okay <laughs> okay so women are we like every day we want something else you know and every day we're still working towards progress we're, pro we're progressive we by nature want to progress so after the wedding now what is our fairy tale? What are we working towards? Yeah, so man. the thing, a, a tip that people can do and implement in their marriage is to plan the next thing. And before the next thing comes and goes, plan the next thing. And it could be as simple as a vacation, and it may be that you can't afford it right now, but you plan it two or three years out, and you're working towards something. And it doesn't always have to even be together. It can be your own goal, and he can have his own, and you're supporting each other. Mm -hmm. But if you always have something that you're looking forward to, then you won't be frustrated by the fact that something has come to completion, and now you're not on to the next thing. Oh, so that keeps the fun it and, does. and the excitement still going because you're planning something in it, you know, ahead Absolutely. of ahead of schedule. Okay. Yeah, and some of us do that naturally in our careers because we have things that are right. going on, and we are a little bit maybe lower maintenance because we've got so much going on that we're paying attention to our career, so we we lighten up on our man naturally. But most people they make the marriage the most important thing in their life. Now, it is. Don't get me wrong. But you need to come to the table whole. If you're whole and your man is whole, then everything that overflows is just fun. And if somebody is having a hard day, you support each other. But when people come and they put so much pressure and expectation onto their partner to complete them and help them with growth, do you think you're ever gonna stop growing as long as you're alive? We're always personally developing. Yeah. And so if you put all that pressure on another human being who has to do it for themselves too, it's crazy. That's a lot. Yeah. So basically what you're saying is when you are engaged, just work mm -hmm. on yourself first. Yeah. And then when you get married, just set small goals, mm -hmm. even if it's buying a home, having mm -hmm. children, planning a trip. And then once you do that, it keeps the fun of the relationship and the excitement going. Absolutely. Anything that has you, as especially as a woman, progressing, something to look forward to. Uh, and again, it can be very simple things, but it, it, you'll find if you make that tiny little distinction where mm -hmm. you don't let something complete. So even if you're on vacation, before that Sunday comes, if you happen to come home on Sunday, right. you know, even if it's a staycation, you've already got the next thing in mind. So, and, and, and I'm all about living in the moment, don't get me wrong, and appreciating the moment. But by having those things, it, it actually helps us with that little component of our, our beingness that requires right. it. And that also helps too, I think you made a very good point because a lot of times when I speak with couples, they're always in the house. Uh -huh. They're always bored, they're not doing anything, they're not going anywhere. So it's always good to keep that, you know, just mm -hmm. like planning a wedding, you're so excited because yeah. you have an event that you're looking forward to. So it's the same thing when you're in a marriage. You have an event that you're looking forward to, so you keep that excitement going. Absolutely. And let me even break it down just a little simpler. For me, sometimes I'll tell my husband, you know, I could be sitting around bored in my house right. too. I have to take all my own advice. I swear to God I do. <laughs> um, but, you know, and I'll say, 
honey, talk to me about the dinner plans we have this evening. I want to just like fantasize about it. Right. <laughs> I love it. You know, tell me about what you're going to make. Cause my husband's a stay-at-home dad, so he, oh. he handles all the cooking. He was in the Marine Corps for 10 years, so he does everything. Laundry is always folded, put away. You know, like he runs our household meticulously. Um, but anyway, and so he makes the, the meals. And so I'm like, tell me about what's for dinner. And then he'll describe it and he'll just, uh-huh. you know, he doesn't need to talk about it, but he's you know, making this woman happy. Right, so. right. And that makes him feel good. It does. It makes him feel good because, you know, you got to stroke that ego a little bit. And that's something that I had to learn, too. It's like oh. my mom is like, Ashita, you got to stop being so hard all the time. You got to <laughs> learn how to stroke the man's ego. <laughs> oh, I give my my husband so much, um, massive amounts of, you know, I have massive gratitude for my right, husband, let me right. just tell you. Um, and you do, you, that's really important. Um, you know, a man wants to know that he's doing a good job. Yes. You know, truthfully. Yes. So, and what we do is we get into the relationship, then we start needing the reassurance, and then we start saying, because we're not planning that next thing, so, honey, you used to da-da-da-da-da, and you don't do that anymore. (laughs) Yes, we do. And we all do it. (laughs) Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And the guy is like, sheesh, you know, I've really been trying. I was doing this, and I thought things were cool, and they they get frustrated, too. Mm -hmm. Men get equally as frustrated, or more so sometimes, because they don't know what to do. And we complicate things because we do know, (laughs) but we're just not willing to say it and get to the point and say it fast. Right. I want to touch also about marriage a little bit on the taboo issue of the seven-year itch. (laughs) What do you think about that? I'm I'm kind of like, I don't know what I think about it really Mm -hmm. because I'm all about, well, if you're having fun, if you're enjoying each other, you know, you respect him, he respects you, you just yeah. keep it moving. But for some people, it's like you that itch. Yeah. And it's not always just men. Oh, no. no it's no, women, no, no. too. Yeah. So what's your thoughts on that? Okay, so the seven-year itch has sort of been perpetuated by a film, I think, called The Seven-Year Itch, which I actually haven't seen mm-hmm. with Marilyn Monroe or something. And they sort of deem it that it happens most frequently around the seven-year point. I believe that it can happen at any point in a relationship. I believe it can happen, you know, day one. It could happen at your wedding. Right, right. (laughs) I mean, truthfully. And all that it means is that you are temporarily dissatisfied or, you know, we're, we're perpetually dissatisfied as it is as human beings, but that you, you know, have an attraction to somebody. And generally speaking, if you, you know, have a relationship and you you have self-worth and you are you know, happy in your relationship, you're still going to meet somebody at some point that catches your eye and you're going to find them attractive. And there's just no denying that in most cases, somebody will see that. Now, everything comes down to your choices at the end of the day. Absolutely. So, and, and, you know, I, I, for me, I'm like, I told my husband, I spell it out for my man. I tell him, (laughs) honey, if you have it, don't tell me about it. I don't ever need to be depressed or worry about it. You know, just don't share it. Well, guys don't necessarily share anyway. Right. But women start to question it. We analyze it. We're like, wait a second, why do I feel this way? And then it takes, then it makes your partner irritating if you have an attraction to somebody else. Mm -hmm. So really, at the end of the day, comes back to your choices. And there's always an opportunity to decide what you want to do if you find somebody attractive. And those things are fleeting if you allow them to be. Right, it comes and goes. It comes and goes. Absolutely. One of the things that I struggle with um, in early, you know, in my (laughs) twenties. that I've actually grown out of was nagging. Oh boy. (laughs) And a lot of my friends, I would say that sometimes people that I know, they have stopped nagging, but the younger, you know, my some of my friends are younger. They, they're like, oh, he doesn't do this. He doesn't do that. I have to constantly tell him. I have to constantly tell him to do this. I have to kind of, don't do that. And it's like the guy was like, oh, she's nagging, nagging, nagging. She's constantly mm-hmm. in my ear. How? What suggestions do you have for us ladies on how to get our men to do what we want them to do without really being a nag right, about right. it? <laughs> this is also addressed because I was the guilty. <laughs> I was guilty of that. I was. I used to be like. Nee, 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 nee. <laughs> okay, so I'm the last person who should nag because I've studied this and mm-hmm. I've seen the consequences that can come from that type of behavior. Um, here's here's the bottom line, okay? If you find yourself nagging, I take it back to the same thing. Whatever you complain about is your issue. <laughs> Make it your issue and change it. So if you're nagging, it means what you're doing is not working. <laughs> if right. you're trying to communicate to your husband,
husband to just, you know, my husband, he, he was driving me crazy because he wouldn't close the cupboard doors or the, the you know, the drawers. Yes, <laughs> or put the cat back on the toothpaste. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's just little stuff like it's that. little stuff. But as simple as it is for me to nag about it and complain about it, it's way easier for me to just shut the dang door. <laughs> and so I finally one day just went, you know what, I'm just going to start shutting the door, okay, because I was getting frustrated. Uh-huh. I know better. So I started shutting the door, started shutting the door, shutting the door. Shut- and, and I just was like, every time I just take a deep breath and shut the door because I could nag and I, but I can't stand to be a nag I don't want to be a nag yeah and one day he just started shutting the doors I'm like what is this I'm like yes it works yeah. <laughs> so it, whether they do or they don't it's don't you want to be that girl that everyone wants to be with you know that doesn't right. complain and so just change it and learn to allow yes, everybody has irritating habits let's admit it that's true but some of them like the door i can handle mm-hmm. you know or cleaning the kitchen uh-huh but what about the one where the he comes home and takes all his clothes off and he just leaves a trail all the way to the bedroom <laughs> ladies do you know anybody like that because i know it <laughs> As soon as he walks in that door, the the hat comes off, the jacket comes off, the shoes come off, and then there's a trail, you know, or the one, this is a good story right here. A friend of mine who um, is married that opens, has a husband that comes against the mail and opens the mail while using the restroom and then has the pile of mail in the bathroom (laughs) and gets up and leaves it there. It's just one of those. Yeah. (laughs) And it's, it's. It goes a little bit beyond just the door, mm-hmm. and then you constantly you're nagging, you're nagging, you're so frustrated. So it's like, how, what suggestions do you have, especially for my friend, how to get him to stop doing that? <laughs> okay, so you know there are things that work with men when you're trying to communicate and ask them to do something. Um, you know, men. There's there's a really great comedian out there. I think his name is Mark Grunger, and he does this whole thing, uh, this whole bit about how you know men compartmentalize everything. So yes. when they're in this box, they're thinking about just this, and then there's this box or this box. Or whatever and there's a box for nothing and when they're in that you know like, right you ask them what, what are you thinking about and they say nothing they're really there men are just thinking about one thing at a time so if they're taking off their clothes they're already thinking about either their relaxation or they're thinking about something else we as women we're just like you know, we never turn it off and we're multitasking everything and so we're thinking you know we're cleaning house they're on the t- you know on the couch watching tv and we're like can't you see i'm doing everything they can see it, but they're not even aware of it being a problem. What they're doing is they're in their box of relaxation and that and they need that to survive. <laughs> so here's what I would say. If you're so annoyed by something, and believe me, I've had things, um, but I have overcome them because I make this a practice. Give yourself perspective. Look at what some of the other couples are going through and tell me that you're not okay with picking up the dirty clothes. Take that energy that it would take to be frustrated and just quickly do it. Put it away and it's done for that day, you know? Right, right. And that's my recommendation. And give yourself perspective. Look at what other couples are going through and you'll be surprised at how good you have it if that's all you're complaining about. Uh, well, that's a good, that's some good advice right there because you can go, oh, you know what? I can handle that. I can handle this. No problem because I can see what my other friend is going through. Mm-hmm. And that's a little bit more deeper than just my man sitting on the toilet, opening up the mail, leaving the pile of mail there. Yeah. I couldn't, when she told me that, I cracked up. Oh, yeah. No, that, that is, is hilarious. Hysterical. It's just the little stuff that you learn when you talk to couples who are married that you know you don't know about and oh. you're like really you can't believe yes. what I have ever heard. <laughs> uh, let me tell you we we kid around all the time about the stories but um but yeah you you really can't believe and once you and that's what makes it so easy for me is because I have heard so many stories and there is some serious stuff going on out there you know yeah. there are people who are being hurt there are people who are going through some major major issues that have to do with their self-worth and you know i honor those people on so many levels because it's you know it's absolutely happening but if if you have something where it's so simple and you can yeah. change it and you will find after you do it perpetually change it yourself just handle it whatever it is that's bothering you all of a sudden it won't bother you right and it, it does change everything truly so right, you know right i love it i love it the, the book julianne o'connor spelling it out for your man five stars <laughs> i i i love that you got five stars each and every review i think i'm hiding my face here sorry <laughs> <laughs> got five stars i love it and also i want to share a fun fact with our audience you were also in the super bowl commercial oh yeah, yes yeah, yeah. um that was ranked <laughs> number one by USA USA Today and named one of the all-time best commercials in 2012 and 2013. So here's a commercial. I just want to show everybody what the commercial is. <laughs> go, go ahead and play it. Check this out. 
Llegó el de Chupi. Llegó el de Chupi. Ay, no, Amy. Amy, que ya te vino. Babe, don't hurt my dog. Oh boy. I love it. <laughs> Congratulations with that. Yeah, thank that is you. absolutely amazing. <laughs> so what's next for you? Oh boy. Um well I have I have another commercial airing right now, which is for farmers insurance, which is a lot of fun. And I always laugh because I end up playing the wife, but none of these guys are actually my husband and everyone thinks they are. Right. <laughs> They're like, how could he tease that dog? Um but you know what? I actually am um in working in conjunction with Tiffany Phillips for a show next week, which is called I Never Met a Jerk I Didn't Like. Uh Awesome title, amazing show, yes. hysterically funny, and you can go to nevermetajerk.com and actually get tickets for that. It will sell out positively. Um, it, it is so funny if you just want to laugh, and, and I'm telling you, this is for guys and girls. Yes, because I saw it, and I love it too. Yeah. It's amazing, amazing show. Yeah, that's next week, and then I've also been asked to be a panelist for The Great Love Debate, which is on tour right now, and so that'll be in Laguna Beach, and um, I, that'll be very interesting. They bring in all these singles, and all of these um, men and women bachelors, bachelorettes, and then they do a whole discussion to figure out why people are single. And so mm. that should be entertaining, and you can yes. get tickets for that at the Great Love Debate. And um, actually, you can save 15 bucks if you use my code, which is JOC15. JOC15. <laughs> welcome to, you're welcome to use that, but that should be a lot of fun. It should be some, some good laughs. That so. sounds like fun. Well, you know, Julianne, I thank you so much for being on Phenomenal Woman. You are absolutely a phenomenal woman, and you wrote this amazing amazing book and you helped a lot of our guests <laughs> uh, learn how to spell it out for your man. Once again, Julianne O'Connor, her website is spellingitout.com. You can also find her on Twitter at spelling it out as well. Spelling it. No. Spelling it. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Spelling it. Yeah. I was spelling it out. That's sorry. Okay. Facebook is spelling it out. Spelling it out. I'm sorry. Spelling it <laughs> out on confusion. Twitter. <laughs> I'm your host, Ashita Andre. And you can find me on Twitter at Ashita Onre or Facebook and Instagram. And thank you so much for being with us today. And we'll see you next week. Thank you so much. Ooh. From producers Maria Menounos, Dario Kristen, Tiana Hobson, Kevin Undergaro, and the entire BHL crew, we would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African-American entertainment. For questions and comments, contact us at info at blackhollywoodlive.com. Like us on Facebook, tweet us, or Instagram us at BHL Online. And I'm your BHL announcer, Scipio. Instagram me at Planet Scipio. Thank you for tuning in. The views expressed here are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals. Thanks for watching Black Hollywood Live on YouTube. For more in-depth interviews and news, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion in the comment section below here. See you soon, everyone. Bye.